Hey, Casey here. Uh, we just got our Tesla wall connector, and uh, I'm gonna be installing myself rather than hiring an electrician. Save you some money. Um, I'm gonna be installing it right here underneath our main service panel, and I got everything I need. Uh, it's gonna charge our car way faster over overnight in eight to 12 hours compared to 24 to 48 hours with the standard. Thank you. All right, let's take a look at our Tesla wall connector. Um, comes with documentation to help you with installation. Um, got the bracket. Looks like it mounts to the wall, and then you mount the connector to it. Uh, some plastic grommets and plugs, screw kit. Um, this is the actual wall connector itself, and this is where you would mount it to the bracket. Um, you have a back entry, a one inch connection. Uh, there's also, I guess, a half inch connection. And from the bottom also, you can make a cord to plug into a receptacle if you want to go that route. Um, but I'm definitely going for the permanent solution of wall mounting it and wiring it in the back. I'm going to use a 2-3 copper, um, picked up at a local uh, electrical supply, I got 5 feet, that's going to be more than enough to just to go um, out of the panel into the connector. Um, I don't even think that, I think it was like $20 for the wire. Um, and with the uh, the breaker actually is one of the most expensive accessory needed to install it. These are about 40 bucks, 100 amp uh, home line breaker for the uh, panel. And then we got uh, one inch chase nipples um, and some lock nuts, rings. Okay, we have everything we need to do this installation. Um, Got a pair of clients, um, large screwdriver, medium sized screwdriver, uh, razor knife, uh, a drill, a small impact, and a um, hole saw kit. Uh, let's see where we're going to mount everything with this wire. Um, kind of looking. I know I have a stud right here on the side of the panel, so I want to mount, be able to mount the uh, wall charger on that. Um, I don't want to block my panel cover from being taken off. Uh, the minimum height installation for the Tesla charger is recommended at 18 inches. I'm well above that. I'm about, say, 30 inches on the top almost. Um, so I'm thinking probably about right there will be more than enough. So that gives me about a foot of drop to run my cable out of the panel and go into the back of the Tesla charger. All right, now I'm gonna be taking the uh, panel cover off. I've already loosened my screws. I only have a few in here. Um, and before you go past this point, I don't recommend anybody unless they are 100% confident in their electrical ability or have previous electrical experience or they are a licensed electrician to perform any of this installation. Okay, get that out of the way. Um, my panel is pretty much full. <laughs> I only have some spares down here that's available, which will allow me enough room to install my 100 amp breaker, um, which will be really nice and close to a knockout that's going to be close to this side near the stud. Um, so, what first I think I'm going to need to do is actually figure out where I'm going to mount this bracket relative to the height of the wall connector, and then I'll know right where to make my hole in the wall. And then I can knock out the knockout, install the, the uh, chase nipples, 
and then run the wire. I'm gonna put this back up here real quick and uh, try to figure out about where I'm gonna put it. Um, I guess center center wise, I don't want because that's where my cord's gonna come in the back. I want it to be right along the side of the stud so that I have plenty of meat to mount that bracket to on that stud. Uh, I would say about right there should be more than enough room. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm about an inch off the stud right there. So I'm gonna make a mark here where this bracket goes. On each side with a pencil. And now I can take the bracket and confirm where I'm at. Okay, so actually the, uh, the back hole is off center a little bit. Um, come on there. Oh, no, that's for, I'm sorry, that's for the half inch hole. Yeah, that's for the little half inch knockout. So I'm actually. My knockout's in the center, it's right here. Um, which will put me, let me get a little straight edge and see. Okay, so if I was to come down, even with this panel, that's my stud. Uh, actually, I need to go over some more, because my center is a little bit off there. So I need to go over a little bit. Not much. I'd say about half inch. Which will still put my two screw holes dead in the stud. Alright, so we'll try there. Okay, so yeah, I was looking on the instructions here, and it shows that this bracket is used for low profile installations for um, the rear and bottom entry. So both of those connections are made actually on the, the wall connector itself. This, this adapter is used for um, rear connections up higher and also coming, coming in from the top. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and install a bracket. Um, it comes with these two. Uh, stainless steel wood screws. Switch my bit around here. Okay. So we decided we're going about right here. Which that puts us right in line with the stud. Kind of wary. I do have some electrical in one of my kitchen here, which is my outlets and things. Um, I don't want to go too deep. This would definitely put me in the way of this stud. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these two in here. A little bit. Okay, we're definitely in the wood there. And then I'm going to take... Uh, stud, which will be more than enough to hold it and safely guard that I don't drill into my electrical, which is in the center of the stud. Alright, that was done. I think it's going to be very easy to level this thing. Let's see. 
try this. Make sure I'm level. Oh, I'll wait. <laughs> Let's level this thing. Right there. Doesn't look level, but okay. Same thing with this one. Cut that extra off. And I can actually take it back off and I'm a, I can do some wall anchors right there, but from what it feels like, that's, uh, yeah, I can't move that it's pretty good. So I'm happy with that. All right, so from the looks of this, um, the knockout in the back of the wall connector is about an inch and a quarter down from the bottom screws. And so that puts me a little bit off of where I thought it was going to be. So that's center right there. Um, now, in order to accommodate the chase nipple, which I'm going to have to bring up into the wall and screw up in up here, um, I'm going to have to drill a big enough hole. So this, this should cover that. Um, it's a little bit oversized, but it'll be fine. The connector's going to cover it up. More than well covered up. Um, so, drill that right there. Center. Alright. Now, that brings up an issue that I have in my personal house here. And that is spray foam. So yeah, this is gonna be fun. But what I can do is I knock out this knockout up here. I'm gonna take a wire and I'm just gonna kind of worm my way a hole for it, and then I'll attach something to that connector and pull it up in there. All right, so I'm gonna knock out this one inch knockout right here. Gotta love the spray foam. So I have plenty of room to run everything in front. I might be able to do that because it is sprayed to the exterior of the wall. So I might be able to do that. Just go through it and go behind. Eh, there's not much room. Yeah. But we'll see how it goes here. Okay. So let's look up close here. So I got the chase nipple installed. Um, that was fun. I had to use a wire to uh, fish it up through the bottom hole up to here. Hold it, put the nut lock nut on. Um, now what I'm gonna do is fish the cable down, which shouldn't be very hard at all. Um, just gonna bend a little bit on it on the end there. Shove it on down the wall. Gotta get through that spray foam. Where's it? 
I'm going to try to hook it or something. I don't know exactly where it's at. I'm trying to curve it back that way. So I'm going to be fighting this for a little bit. <laughs> it's kind of boring, but I'll let you know when I get it done. All right, so we're ready to install the uh, wall connector. Um, we've got the wire over on. Um, the cover, to get into here, it comes with two bits. Um, one, a small and a little medium-sized um, Torx with a security, like a little pin that goes in the middle. Um, the smaller one you're going to use on this little bit that goes right here on the bottom of the cover and then what you're going to do is take that out and gently run your fingers underneath by prying up here. Don't put too much pressure because you'll bend the cover and then just run your fingers down and then when you get to the middle it's just going to pop off. Um, there's two little clips right here that come loose and then when you get that off then this is the, the weather tight cover there's going to have six of these medium sized screws and you're going to use the bigger Torx bit for that. Take those out, take the cover off, and now you have access to the uh, to your connections and lugs here. Uh, ground down here looks like. And that's the, the one inch inlet right there where we got to install the chase net. Okay, so ready to hook this up. Uh, you can see the one inch right there. Got the chase nipple installed. Um, I'm gonna slide that over the wires. Before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and strip these uh, to make it easier to manage them and get them into the connectors. tip provided there, I'm going to uh, install the screws. Mounted to the wall. Oh, that's sturdy, man. Jeez. All right, time to hook up the wires. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Um, the ground's gonna be pretty much the simplest, easiest to hook up here. 
I mean, it's number 10. <laughs> I can bend it and get it up in there. Um, golly, actually, I have to take that back. It's going to be tough, too. Got it in there. Do the ground first, get it out the way. Okay, that's it's all the way in there. Tighten it down with the flathead. boys are going to be a little fun. Um, so we got one and, one and two right here. Um, hope you all can see that clearly here. Okay. Um, it looks like I might have to um, cut a little bit off. Let's see, probably about this much. stripping them. I think he said you'd need to go in like five eighths of an inch in each connector. So strip that insulation there. Neutral's gonna get in my hair. You could see it. And the garage light went off. Okay. How convenient. I've been in here too long. Alright. Peel this one off. So, in order to get this guy on here, I think we need to do the red one first because it's going to be the tighter spot. So, let's try bend it back a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. And then I gotta insert it way back up in here. So I'm actually gonna have to pull some wire back. Um, that's gonna be tough. I got a little bit of slack on the ground here. So I'm gonna do that with that. And get this out the way. Let's see if we can pull. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I definitely got some room there. And I can probably just show. All right. So yeah, 
that was a pain in the butt, but I got them in there. All right, next thing we have to do is uh, set the dip switches. Um, let me use this little screwdriver to uh, adjust this little lever here and set the switches for um, the power that we're going to be using. Um, okay, line or neutral greater than 250 volts. Line or neutral 240 volts or less. So one and two, that's correct. Okay, so that's for 240, so that's correct. And then we have to select this guy and put it on uh, maximum output current. We're gonna go to 80. I mean, we're not gonna be using 80, but um, that's what I'm capable of you doing here. So that would be D. We go to D. Where is D? Oh, D. Oh boy. I believe that's it. Yeah. So we're facing D. If I'm E I'm on E, then it won't do anything. Let's see. Definitely can feel the D tent. That's a D. Alright. Easy enough. Okay, now to hook up the wire in the panel. All right, so we're gonna install our 100 amp breaker here. Oh, I'm gonna be putting it right here at these bottom two. And uh, get these out of here. All right, here install the breaker. And then we're gonna have to uh, strip and land our ground and our two hots. All right, hooking up these wires now. Got them uh, ground landed and uh, sheathing stripped off. Just taking off the rest of this. Getting a little ahead of myself there. Done with that. Okay, 100 amp. Listen to these lugs. And you really need this big screwdriver because if you use a small one, you're just going to strip out those lugs. Strain on it. Okay, in there. There we go. That's it. All right. 
put everything back together. All right, so put the cover back on. check something in there. I might let it charge for an hour and make sure my connections aren't getting hot or anything. Let's see the buttons on the side. Um, make sure there's no faults. Okay. So panel cover back on just temporarily. I guess that's telling me it's ready. So, let's see. Take the cable and roll it around here. And do something like this. And then Time to get the car and try it out. So for a reference, we're going to try the uh, travel charger. Travel charger plugged in, and let's see where are we running at. So we got 12 current amps, 24 plus hours. Um, we drained it pretty much completely, and that's going to give us four miles per hour. It's going to take a while. All right, let's pull out the big guns. See what the wall charger can do. Alright, it's pretty good. It's going. The juice is flowing. Let's see what we're getting. Now that's crazy. <laughs> well, I'm sure it, uh, okay, so we're only charging at 48 amps. 
Okay. And we're gaining 42 miles per hour. Wow. Got to show the wife this. All right. So hopefully that helps out um, on a do-it-yourself Tesla wall charger installation. Once again, don't recommend it unless you are positively sure you're capable of doing the electrical connections or hiring a licensed electrician. Thank you. So also I recommend on your travel charger that you go with an upgrade by ordering some extra plugs. Um, your 15 amp plug standard outlet comes with it. Um, I'd suggest getting probably a uh, 30 amp receptacle and a 50 amp receptacle. These are usually used at RV parks. Um, you may even be able to pick up like a, a range outlet or something at maybe relatives home or a dryer outlet through a window worst case because <laughs> I mean you do have 20 foot of cord here so you could get a charge in an emergency situation.